Cincinnati, Gene Kritsky had food poisoning. In 2004, he went to a cicada-themed happy hour at a TGI Fridays that has since been torn down. The next morning, a photographer drove from Chicago to take his picture for People magazine. The photographer offered to cancel, but this was People. And for a professor at a small college on Cincinnati's west side, the publicity was priceless. Kritsky, who was 50 at the time, spent eight hours with the photographer that day. By then, cicadas had already emerged from the ground, climbing out of tunnels where they had lived for 17 years. Kritsky remembers the photographer catching bags of bugs and dumping them on him. Between shots, Kritsky would walk into the woods and throw up. In the end, the magazine used one picture. Kritsky was standing in the grass, hands folded across his stomach like he was holding a baby. He wore a brown safari hat with a khaki shirt that had two chest pockets. In the photo, around 100 cicadas crawled up his shirt. Some crawled on his hat. Some crawled on his neck, through a beard that had started to gray. In the magazine, the headline splashed across the page in bold letters, Big Bug Man, and in the picture, Kritsky was smiling. Gene Kritsky holds a microphone close to his computer. He wants the crowd to hear it. It's a love song, he says, except with lawnmower buzzes replacing guitars. It's the song of the cicada, their mating call, their 17-year itch. Kritsky, 67 now, pulls the microphone away from the computer and mimics the call himself. He treasures that sound. He drives around listening for it in a car with a specialty cicada license plate. Kritsky has been called the Indiana Jones of cicadas, and he takes a safari hat with him almost everywhere he goes. But what drives someone to devote their life to an insect most people hate? In 1991, The Inquirer, which like USA Today is a part of the USA Today network, described cicadas as, horseflies on steroids, and a, god-awful looking thing with a black body, red eyes and hairy legs. The periodical insects, which are members of the same family as bedbugs, live underground and only emerge once every 17 years or, depending on the type of cicada, once every 13 years. Here's the good news. They don't sting, don't bite and can actually help your lawn. Yet some people fear them, and they're often mistaken for locusts. And when they die, because of the sheer number of them, it stinks. But in other cultures, cicadas are an almost holy symbol sometimes used at funerals. In the 1700s, people believed cicadas could predict war. Their genus, or generic scientific name, is Magicacata. In short, they are weird, and they are wonderful. At least to Kritsky, a dean at Mount St. Joseph University, who jokes the insects got him tenure. Anybody who deals with cicadas eventually meets up with Jean, said Dan Mosguy, a 52-year-old online marketer in New Jersey who started a cicada website after a wedding in the 90s.